come in, or as we like to call it around here, nothing but rants the show where I find topics that I'm oddly passionate about and I pontificate upon them. These are not hot takes, but rather takes that I'm hot about. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? You know, we gave you a, a lyric of the day, if you will, from Lil Wayne's I'm Me yesterday. And it seemed like the audience, necessary audience, audience resonated a little bit with that. Um, was listening to the, the same playlist today and was running through Emotionless by Drake. And he has a song or a, a lyric in the song that says he's breaking speed records on roads that others have paved. And, you know, I got to thinking about that today. You know, Kirby Smart is definitely a disciple of Nick Saban, right? He's 100% a disciple of Nick Saban. He has built his machine identical to that of the one in Tuscaloosa that he left and studied amidst. But you look at it, and it took uh, it took quite a while, right, at Alabama before they were like, for sure, the national power of college football. Not just the the couple wins and, and, and good seasons with uh, – you know, with 12 or McCoy, who I can't remember, the broken hand McCoy game and all the, the Bama Hoover dudes, game managing quarterbacks, right? The Blake Simses of the world, the Cokers of the world, right? Those types of quarterbacks. And then about seven, eight years into his regime over there at Alabama, he starts popping like four or five stars like dudes at the quarterback position, right? Kirby Smart has definitely is driving on the same paved road that Nick Saban and Alabama were on. But you could definitely argue he's breaking speed records. Like, he is getting there much faster. Um, and it seems like, by yesterday's news, it seems like it's going to be sustained success and continued success in Athens. Welcome into tonight's show. Got a loaded one for you. As we told you, yesterday was a great day for Georgia fans. You guys were hyped up. You guys were energetic about the news of Dylan Rayola committing to the University of Georgia. We gave you a nice little film breakdown here on the channel. If you haven't watched it, you probably should. Uh, maybe later after the live show. But definitely go back and check that out. Um, you know, it, it, it's perfect timing. And I, this is not, this is not, this is definitely 1,000% planned. This is not by happenstance. This was by nature. They designed this. Dylan Rayola will be in town this week, okay? I, I don't know if that's breaking news. If you're not on patreon.com forward slash Brooks Austin, this might be news to you. Welcome to the show tonight. Um, there is a, a, a sense of optimism. He will be in town this week. He's going to be in town this weekend. And this weekend, for those of you who don't know, is the scavenger hunt weekend. This is the opening kickoff to like the, the summer recruitment cycle, if you will, for the University of Georgia. This is the weekend where they have some of their bigger names um, come into town and they kind of get a face and a feel of what their 2024 class is ultimately going to be about um, and who their kind of faces of that uh, you know class, if you will, are going to be. So Rayola being in town this weekend is a huge plus, and it also comes right off the heels of him committing. So there's all this mo, if you will, Uncle Mo, Uncle Uncle Momentum in the favor of the University of Georgia right now. And we're gonna give you one, we'll give you one of the other names on the list right now, the long list of visits uh, that we have up on patreon.com forward slash Brooks Austin right now. Uh, Jeremiah Smith's going to be in town this weekend as well. So the timing of Rayla having just committed um, with Jeremiah Smith being into town this weekend as well with, uh, on, on top of some other five-star wide receivers and, and, and ball catchers and, and offensive weapons and other things, that's valuable. That's invaluable, in fact. It's not just that the number one player in America committed to the University of Georgia this weekend or this week, um, and they have another quarterback in Ryan Puglisi in the class. It's the fact that both of these young men are committed to the University of Georgia and actively recruiting weapons, uh, you know, alongside of them. This stuff can sometimes get overblown, but I don't, I don't think you can uh, speak about this enough. I, I think it's important that when you are a quarterback, particularly, and you get in a class relatively early, it's important that you put your voice and your stamp on your class. Okay, that is going to be your group of men um, that you attempt to lead when you get to college. So there you go. Right. I mean, that's a, a huge win for the University of Georgia this week, not only, like I said, in, in terms of the commitment of Dylan Rayola um, and, and the subsequent seemingly uh, solid commitment from Ryan Puglisi. thought those quotes and, and comments were excellent from the young man uh, just about seeking competition. I spoke with him privately um, and I, I don't mind bringing this to forefront. I explained to him basically like I, I admire young men like him that seek out competition is very rare. Um, it's, it's something that great, like people who are aspiring to be great, it's something that they seek. 
People who are great seek out competition. They do not want to be around people that don't push them. That's not what people who are great are about. If you look at the, the, the most successful people in the world, the people that are around them their whole entire life, the team that they keep, those are inspirational people to them. That's, that's gas to their fire. Okay, same thing uh, with, with that quarterback room. You want competitive people. You, you want other great people around you. I, I find that in Puglisi's quotes, in Puglisi's comments, in return, and, and, and in uh, response, rather, of yesterday's news. So that's all great news for the University of Georgia. And the immediate future right now looks really, really solidified, right? What else you add on top of this class um, from a, a standpoint now is only cherries on top of the, the Sunday because it's going to be, you know, probably the number one overall recruiting class in the, the nation here in 2024. And I'm just looking at it. You know, it's funny. Doing my job uh, over these years, I kind of find where you guys are as a fan base. You become rather predictable because I've known you, right? You are a friend of mine. I have known you for a while. At this point, I know your habits. I know who you are. Um, I know who you are at your core, your identity, right? Um, and as a fan base, this time of the year, nine times out of ten, you guys are telling me, hey, Brooks, why do we only have five commits? Hey, Brooks, why are we ranked fifth in the or seventh in the recruiting rankings? Hey, Brooks, what the hell's going on? Why aren't things picking up? And here we are right now in the middle of May, and the 2024 class has 12 commitments, and you're sitting on top of the rankings in 2020 or 24-7's composite rankings, right? So what is typically the standard for the University of Georgia? You guys are closers. That's what y'all normally do. Right now, you are opening season. Right now, you are out hitting in, hitting the big boys right off the rip uh, and trying to hold on to them. Um, I've just randomly peeked up and seen this. He said, Puglisi needs a name. We've got it, baby. It's Pugga. Duh. You're not a Discord member. You should be, T. Pelzi. Um, Pugga. Ryan Puglisi, Pugga. That's his nickname. It's, it's the easiest one yet. Uh, it's the most marketable one yet um, of all the names. So y'all run with that one. Uh, courtesy, uh, trademark rather, of uh, Ryan Puglisi and the Discord Mafia over there on the Film Guy fam. That's facts. Okay, No ifs, ands, or buts about it. But the immediate future for the University of Georgia feels really, really solid. I think the, the quarterback room right now, there is a path to all three of those guys having success. Think about this. Carson Beck, one-year starter, goes to the league. Has a great year, goes to the league. Brock Vandergriff has the opportunity to do the very same thing the next year. Gunnar Stockton has the very same opportunity to do the same thing the next year. You get two years of Rayola. And then we see what happens in this class of 2026 which is the real reason I kind of wanted to talk to you guys tonight. As you know, we are going across the state of Georgia seeing as many football players as we humanly possibly can. It is the month of May. It is high school spring season, all that good stuff. Um, every spring, I try to go see as many schools as I can. Today, as you guys have known, um, if you follow me on Twitter, was the Carrollton trip. Carrollton's practice is always important to me to see, even if they are the day before their scrimmage. Sorry, Coach King, if you're listening tonight. I doubt you are. You're a busy man. Um, typically, I try to go when they actually have pads on, but today I only got to see them in helmets. And I always, I always learn something. There's always something there, right? Um, there's a handful of these staffs. There's actually dozens of them now, I feel like. I, I, there's, not enough of the, I, there's not enough time for me to see all the great coached uh, football teams in the state of Georgia nowadays. But uh, Carrollton's certainly one of them, and I enjoy my trip over there every year. But obviously, my reason being there, apart from Caleb Odom or the 2026 center that you're going to know about in a couple of years when George is hot after him, and so is the rest of the SEC. Um, obviously, there's a, a multitude of players over there that I would have a reason to be over there and covering them. But most of you guys know Julian Lewis, right? The 2026 quarterback um, in that class. And I, I, I've kind of wrestled with which way we're going to do this whether or not I'm going to show you the ridiculous footage that I took today first or whether or not I'm going to give you the eval, the in-person evaluation and the, the imprint that this young man left upon me first. I think I'm going to give you the physical stuff first, the throws. Okay, so what I'm going to do is we're going to play this. Normally, I don't talk over these things, but we're going to talk over these things because I want you to learn about this individual, what I learned watching him work today. Okay, again, this is a 15-year-old individual that has been told everything in the world is his at the quarterback position and will be his as long as he does things right. And by all means, by God, he's doing those things, okay? So know who we're looking at, know what we're looking at, and then we'll talk through it, all right? Let's shut up. Let's grind some tape. How about that? Fresh Brooks Austin tape, right? This is yours truly shot today. I edited this sucker while sucking down my coffee in pre-show today. Check this sucker out, all right? Let's get over here. 
This is just his warm-up drill. That's Coach Barge right there, his quarterback coach. Really smart dude. Um, it's just a good way to loosen up his arm. And what I love about watching Julian work today, um, I haven't had the opportunity to really like watch him warm up and get after it um, in, in a couple of months. But I, I loved watching him experiment with arm angles and slots. If you look through uh, just the, these two throws right here, this first throw, right, or this first throw a couple of seconds ago comes from that kind of sidearm slot. He's just finding the edge of the football, okay? I see a lot of uh, young quarterbacks going out every single day and throwing the same cut over and over and over and over and over again, and that's great. It'll provide a level of consistency, but it's not reality to the position. The position requires us to be in different points and different spots at different times of the day um, and different times of the game. And what I also want you to notice today as we're watching these Count the number of balls that are not spinning tight, okay? You won't. It'll be zero. The ball is always tight on this dude. And the other thing I want you to notice, ball placement. This kid's ball placement is out of this world, okay? Ball placement, anticipa uh, anticipation, processing, and the tightness and the, 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 the just general prettiness of the ball. And I know prettiness is not a word or, or a nice word or a good word, rather. Um, but definitely how the ball spins in the air relates to how catchable it is you will not see a lot of drop balls from elite wide receivers with this dude because the ball is always in the right spot and it's always tight right there's no wobble to it hardly ever no wasted motion in the in the in the flick of it either i saw a, a highly highly touted quarterback the other day that was dropping that thing real real low and that kind of stuff scares me as you will see through these clips there was about four uh power five coaches there to watch him today um, and, and they got the same show that I did. It, it was put on. I got about eight and a half minutes of this. I don't know if we're going to watch it all, but I, again, I want to keep telling you about the ball place. But look at all these balls. They're put out in front. All right, now we're going to get to see him chunk it a little bit. Okay, he's standing at the backside 45. These balls are landing at the 15, okay? So pretty effortless juice right here, and they are in a bucket every single time, no matter if it's freshman receiver, varsity receiver, no matter. It is just effortless, flick of the wrist, Ball dropped into the bucket every single time. And now he's throwing rail shots, right? So this is a different kind of a vertical throw. Now we're throwing these cover two, kind of what we call hole throws. We want to put it on a line, okay? And if we have to, like our big tight end right there, we're going to put it on that back shoulder. So really, really working on being precise with his ball placement all day long. I can see him, not necessarily see him, but the results, you can tell he is very antiquated with where he is placing the football Okay, like even this drill right here. Okay, these these running backs that are stationary, they are standing with their face, okay, inward. You see that? Their faces are here. Every single one of these balls will not be thrown at the midline of this human's body. They will be thrown out in front of him as to simulate a running throw, right? That guy is going to be moving, so let's not throw it with him stationary. All right, so even the, the littlest things, right? We want to put that ball on the left side. This was another thing I noticed by him today. If and when he does miss, right, which that's not a terrible miss. That's his backup quarterback. That ball probably should be up and away. All those good things, right? That's not a terrible miss. Watch what happens. Watch what happens. Boom. He comes right back to it. He takes the rep, and boom, throws a damn strike. Okay? So even when there are mistakes, okay, there is immediate need to clean that up, right? Immediate need to clean that up. The other thing you will never notice about this human being, his body language never changes. Every single one of these reps from the neck up looks identical. The head never drops. The shoulders never sink. The, the body position and the body language never changes. You know what that tells me? The mindset's never changing. What the thought processes are in the young man's head are consistent. I told an SEC staffer that was there to see him today, he is constantly in what we call the flow state. Okay, this is another example of this. Look at this. He's getting what I would call cheeky. He's getting a little bit experimented with his throwing mechanics, right? These two reps in a row, he's really trying something out. Look at him. He's flicking it, and he misses coach. Look at this ball. This ball is over here just a little bit. Now watch this. He comes back the next rep. Okay, comes back the next rep. He's far more stationary. He's far more standard. He throws it like he's taught to do it and not ad-libbing like an athlete, trying to figure out where his limits are, and he throws a damn strike. Coach just misses it. Now this is what I also love. Okay, they change up the drill a little bit. So what's he doing right here, guys? This is a five-star, the best quarterback in the state of Georgia right here, taking what we call a dry rep. This is a rep that he is just mentally processing what his body is about to do so his body will do it properly. 
Now he'll walk back over there and he'll take the rep and look where the ball and the result is. Boom. It just, man, I'm telling you from a ball placement and an accuracy standpoint, there is nothing better. The evaluation does not get better. It will not get better. It can't get better. Okay. I, I told a, a, a Pac-12 coach today. I don't want to name guys because it's none of their business. It's none of y'all's business. Who is there? Um, you can look on Twitter and find it. Uh, I told a Pac-12 coach today. It is as if he can walk out there to his receiver and place it in his hands and say, it's going to be right here. Even if it's 40 feet away. Look at this. Dot. Absolute dot. On the run. Moving left, evading left. Silly, 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 silly stuff. We're three and a half minutes. We could go all day about this. And sometimes I want to. Sometimes I, I don't know if you guys enjoy this. Sometimes I don't really care. Look at that because I freaking enjoy it. Look at that ball. That is goofy. That is goofy, goofy stuff coming from this young man. Huh. That ball's a little bit behind. Okay, now we're actually watching real football. Okay, well, it's seven on seven, okay? Not routes on air. This is him processing information in front of him. Watch how quickly these balls come out of his hand and look at their location. Will not, will not, will not miss. Never. Hardly ever, I should say. I think I counted three incompletions all day. This one, this one was awesome. Check this out. So they tell every quarterback in the world, throw it in their eyes. Throw it in their eyes because that's what they're used to doing. They're used to tracking the ball into their eyesight, so throw it into their eyes. When they're coming back on anything inward breaking, that's hitches, slants, anything where they're chest up or eyes up to you, put that some bitch on their face mask. That is what they tell quarterbacks. This ball is thrown so early. This ball gets there so fast. This wide receiver is so new and so young. I don't know his deal, but anyways, so not ready for this ball. It hits him right in the damn face mask and bounces up. You cannot, cannot create better ball placement. There is none. There is none. The, the, the decision-making, I mean, if there's a wide-open guy on the field, he finds it every single time. Every single time. Zips on the run. Not a wobbly ball yet. Not a wobbly ball yet. There's a couple more throws I want to get into uh, uh, towards the later of this, this film, man. But I, I think y'all get the point to an extent because, holy smokes, I want to watch the whole thing, honestly, as some of what some of the quotes say and some of the comments say. So we will. We'll watch all of this because, I mean, it's fascinating to me. Like this ball right here, stop. Stop playing with me. That ball's throwing 45, 50 yards, okay? And it's just flick at a wrist. Flick at a wrist. Uh, we got a ball spinner, too. We got a Jake Fromm ball spinner out here. Also noticed uh, for you Discord folks, he must have huge hands. Either huge hands or an extremely strong grip because he pump fakes the football, you know, really, really well. Oh, uh, look at that ball. Oof. Look at this. This is the last read, too. Uh, puts it up there, drops it into a bucket. Kid comes down with it late. Uh, actually drops it late, but nonetheless, absolutely dimes all over the field today. And every day. This is also what I love. We talk, you can't see it, but I know for a fact his feet are paired with his eyes. This is what it looks like to click through your reads. One, two, three, four, check down. You know what I'm saying? That that's what it's called. That's what playing quarterback looks like, even in a seven on seven setting. Right? I think this is one of them crazy balls. No, nah, he's, he's he he escapes here. And just phew, vapor, vapor trail. Okay, we're getting into some of the the more basic throws, if you will, of the day. Just absolute dots left and right from a man's. Um, but here's the deal, okay? I can sit here all day, and we can watch this stuff all day. And I would. I would. I would sit here all day with you guys, and we would watch that, okay? And we would find more and more stuff that we're fascinated with and all that good stuff. Um, but that's not what left me, left me walking away going, damn, that kid's special today even though obviously that is special. That is as special as what we watched last night when everyone was on here raving about the commit that you current got or currently have. But when I got done with interviewing Julian today, when I got done, or no, excuse me, when I got done with practice today, taking photos and all that good stuff and taking these videos and doing all that good stuff, the first thing Julian says to me, two things. What did you think? How can I get better? What did you think? How can I get better? Guys, I, I, 
I don't like to do the best ever stuff. I don't like to do that kind of stuff. That is the cleanest prospect I've ever evaluated. There are no questions to me about Julian Lewis. I know he can process. I know he will walk into a, a college offense and, and be able to, to absorb the information uh, and, and, and go out and process on the field. I know he'll, he'll be able to read coverages, and I know he is more accurate than any quarterback I've ever evaluated. But, man, that right there, that is why that dude's special. He is as good as they come, and when he's done with the day, he wants to know, how can I get better? Boom. That's it right there. Um, so we're good on the on the Julian Lewis evaluation. We're going to be good on the evaluation. And I said this to an SEC staffer today. I said, look, man, he's not going to be 6'5". He's not going to run a 4'4", okay? He's not going to be uh, one of these transcendent throwers that we talked about last night. I don't think he is one. I don't think he throws the ball like Dylan Rayola. I don't think he throws the ball like Nico Lamalavella. I don't think he throws the ball like Caleb Williams. I don't. I think that right there is the only human I will ever allow right now to date for you to compare to Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow, ladies and gentlemen, is not the biggest arm in the NFL. Joe Burrow is not the best athlete at the quarterback position in the NFL. Joe Burrow does not have all the physical traits in the world. Joe Burrow is not 6'5". He's 6'3". Okay? But Joe Burrow goes out there on Sundays and kicks the shit out of the NFL because he is the best processor and best mental uh, thinker on the football field every single Sunday. Okay? Period. Point blank. That's that dude. That's what y'all just watched. Those throws are insane. They are insane. But his ability to know where to throw, to know – like he, he doesn't miss reads. That's what I'm saying. Like you can sit down, I would imagine, with Coach King and watch tape and say, Coach, how many reads did he miss this week? Where you're like, hey, probably shouldn't have thrown that ball. We need to throw this ball over here. I bet he can count them on two hands. It's just, it's it's over and over and over again. And you know what? Like, as much as we talk about how great it is to throw the football um, and, and, and be an elite thrower, and he can make every throw in the NFL, on an NFL football field, by the way, that's clear and evident. Y'all just watch that. That shit's crazy. He can make every throw. OK, um, he's like ninety eight point five percent, not the ninety nine percent. You see what I'm saying? He's the one point five percent or not the one percenter in terms of the arm talent. And that's OK. Um, but man, just a flawless evaluation for me and all of the things that he's great about. They're 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 results of work, right? The reason he throws the tightest ball you'll ever see for a 15-year-old is probably because the dude's thrown more footballs than any 15-year-old you've ever met, okay? The reason the kid processes information better than any other 15-year-old I've ever evaluated is probably because he studies and loves football more than any 15-year-old I've evaluated at the position. The reason his ball placement is so incredible is because he's thrown a 1,000 footballs. All of the reasons that Julian is great, all of the reasons that Julian Lewis is a five-star are Julian Lewis made. God, he's 6'1", guys. He's 6'1", 220 pounds, or 200 pounds, not even 220. You know, I think it's like 185, maybe, 190, okay? This is not God's gift to football physically. That dude worked for that. That dude 1,000% worked for that. And that's why, to me, that is the safety, safest evaluation of the quarterback position there is. Okay, that will be successful 100 percent. There's not a flaw in the evaluation for me on Julian Lewis, which if you're a Georgia fan listening tonight, you're like, how in the hell do we get that onto campus too? How, how do we pursue not only landing Dylan Rayola, but also landing Julian Lewis in 2026? OK, do you want the recipe for doing it? We'll try to figure it out right now. Um, first of all, you're going to punt on 2025. I know the McIntyre kid up there in, in Tennessee is really, really good. And I know there's some great quarterbacks, even in the state of Georgia. I know Antoine Hill is really, really good in 2025. Hell, I like that Bryce Baker I, kid I saw from, uh, from North Carolina the other day. Okay? But you're punting on 2025 if you're the University of Georgia. You got Dylan Rayo in the room. It's, it's crowded enough. You are – Puglisi as well. You are punting on 2025. All right? So that's step one. Step two – um. You know, it's interesting. There's always been, it's like rumors around Julian. And it's like, none of it ever comes from his people. Like one of the ones, and I talked to him about this today. One of the ones is this idea of reclassifying. 
Like people want him to reclassify. People think he's going to reclassify because they just assume you're like, hey, best quarterback we've seen since Trevor Lawrence, yada, 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 whatever, whatever, whatever. It's 2023, NIL, all this stuff. Like everyone thinks he's going to reclass. You know what? I, I think I said this the other night. You know what I hear Julian Lewis talk about? Julian Lewis wants to win state titles after state titles, and Julian Lewis wants to break every single passing record there is in the state of Georgia. This is a kid that grew up like, not, I'm not going to say, I don't know him. I don't know that he idolized these individuals, but it is clear to me that the records in this state mean something to Julian Lewis. I've never heard that family talk about reclassifying. Where did that come from? I don't know. So like even the, even the buzz around his recruitment, I don't know. Okay. And here's the other thing. What is the world of college football? Assuming he doesn't reclassify, which I'm telling you right now, there's no reason to believe that he will. What is the world of college football going to look like in 18 months, 24 months? And this is what I was talking to somebody about today. You know what I can almost bank on? I can almost put my uh, next month's mortgage payment on this right now. Mike Bobo ain't leaving University of Georgia for no other job. If the University of Georgia scores 45 points a season this year or a game this year, you know who's going to be the offensive coordinator next year? Mike Bobo with a slight raise. Ain't no, ain't no 40, 45 point season uh, going to get Mike Bobo another head coaching job. That's not what this is. It's, it's part of the reason why it's not only the relationships, the Rayola, Matthew Stafford, and all that good stuff. It's not, it's not, it's not the only reason I thought Bobo was the, the easy selection when Munkin decided to head off to the NFL. It was security. Georgia's in a place right now, staff wise where Muschamp's still milking the buyout, I'm pretty sure, from South Carolina. Bobo's hanging out as a, as a well-paid offensive coordinator, enjoying life. Okay, Glenn Schumann just turned down an NFL job this past offseason. Like, it seems like there's some real solid security around the University of Georgia and their coaching staff right now. And that could all blow up tomorrow. There could be some new mystical offer and, and being that enters the equation, and that could all change. But there is some serious stability hanging around in Athens in that coaching staff uh, for the first time in a while, and there's no question marks. So when I talked to Julian, there was a, a relationship that had been built with Munkin, and there was a quality relationship that had been built with Munkin, right? Munkin, as we told you guys, was what we call a chameleon coordinator, somebody that can take whatever the ingredients were and put out a five-star dish, okay? I also call that good coordinating, all right? I think Bobo has those capabilities as well. Um, what do they want to see, right? What What would you want to see if I was Julian Lewis? Man, I that offense they run over there at Carrollton seems to fit him really, really well. The reason the comp for me is Joe Burrow is because not only the elite processing, I would I would design an offense identical to what Burrow does with Cincy. If you notice, Joe Burrow's chest and eyes are on the defense every snap. The ball begins and ends with nine every snap. He has the ability to do whatever he wants and make whatever decision and whatever check based off what the defense is giving him at all times. You can classify this as air raid systems. You can classify this as a, a fun and gun. You can classify this as whatever you want. But I'm telling you right now, if you want to recruit Julian Lewis, if I were recruiting Julian Lewis right now, I would be saying, all right, here is our offense. Our offense is going to be Julian is a computer processor, the best and highest quality and most efficient processor we've ever evaluated. Now let's go design an offense based off that, right? Let's design a winner at each individual level based off timing, right? Let's, let's, let's develop a now winner, something that can win now in case we get uh, blitzed up. Let's develop a, a, a mid-level threat and let's develop a deep shot threat, all with a, a run option built in. Because the other thing about Julian, that dude's been calling every, or not calling everything. He's been in charge of everything offensively since he, you know, this year. Day one, he walked into high school football. He was handling checks at the line of scrimmage. He was handling protections. He was handling uh, any type of, uh, you know, run adjustments, all that good stuff. Kills, everything. Everything that it is playing quarterback, that dude was doing at 14 years old. I'm telling you from a neck up, which is the whole evaluation. If you have not figured that out by now, this up, the neck up is the evaluation of quarterbacks. They all throw great. They all do. Whether or not you throw 107 or whether or not you throw 99 miles an hour, both of you got big league shit.
Can you hit your locations? Can you hit your spots? Do you have off-speed pitches, right? If we're going the baseball route analogy. It's not just about how well you throw it, and this dude processes it all. If you want to know what the skill set is, that's what the skill set. And as I, so, I told you earlier, those are skill sets that he acquired through work. He acquired through work. Okay? So, shouts out to him. I'm, I'm excited to see what, like how he continues to develop. Um, and you'll ask me right now, like, who are the schools that are in his recruitment? It's simple. Okay? It's about five or six. Okay, I'm only going to name about four from what I can see. Okay, these aren't – this isn't from Julian, by the way. Um, this is what I saw today. Alabama was there. Um, Texas was there. USC was there. Mike Bobo's been there twice this spring. Those, those would be the schools I'd be focusing on. Big boy schools. Ohio State, maybe. Okay, big boy schools. Big boy programs with national title expectations perennially. That's what this dude's all about, and that's where this dude's going to play football. Um, appreciate you guys for being here. I'm going to see you next time. I got to get going.